Hello, and welcome to today's Quick Plays video on the basics of Poker EV. EV, short for expected value, is the most important mathematical concept in poker. Without a solid grasp of EV and ability to create plus EV plays, a player is doomed to fail. In this video, I'll show you what EV is, how to use it, and why understanding it is vital for poker success. Like I mentioned earlier, EV stands for expected value. It's the mathematical way of saying, in the long run, this play is expected to net me X amount of money. Now you may have heard the terms plus EV or negative EV before, and these simply mean that a play is expected to be profitable in the long run, or that a play is expected to lose us money in the long run. Our goal in poker is to consistently make plus EV plays. Now because EV is mathematical, there is a formula, but it's not that scary, I promise. This is the basic structure of EV equations we will use in poker. Let's break it down simply. We have percentage W, which is how often we will win a given hand. We have money W, which is how much we will win the times we do in fact win. We have percentage L, which is how often we will lose this hand. And last we have money L, which is how much money we will lose when we lose the hand. Not too bad, right? But how can we actually use this? You and I are going to play a game. It's a fun game where we take out a fair coin and flip it. In this game, if the coin lands on heads, I will pay you $3. If the coin lands on tails, you will pay me $1. You already know this is a profitable or plus EV game, but using an EV equation, we can work out exactly how much money you will win on average each time we flip the coin. If we pull out our EV formula again, we can start filling in the variables and solve it. We know that when you win, you get $3, so money W equals 3, and we know that when I win, you lose $1, so money L equals 1. We also know that because this is a fair coin, there is a 50% chance of it coming up heads and a 50% chance of it coming up tails. So percentage W is 50% and percentage L is 50%. Just a quick trick that you can remember is that percentage W plus percentage L always equals 100%. So if you only know one of them, you can always figure out the other. So if we do the math quickly, we see 150 minus 50 cents equals plus $1 which means that in the long run you are expected to win $1 each time we flip the coin. Now if we only flip the coin two times, your only outcomes are plus six, plus two, or negative two. So you can see how in the short term the results can seem quite different than the plus one expected value we calculated a second ago. But if we flip the coin millions of times, you will average your $1 profit each time I flip. In poker, we focus on the long run, not the short term. We recognize that results can vary wildly in small samples, but we know that in the long run the math will bring everything back to expected value, which means two very important things. One, we want to constantly find little games like this that are plus EV, and two, we want to avoid playing games where the EV is negative. With that said, let's see how all this applies to poker. In this hand, it folds around to the small blind who goes all in. We hold ace-queen and are debating what we want to do. Now that we are armed with the knowledge of EV, we can actually proof this situation mathematically. We just pull out our fancy formula and start plugging in numbers. So in this situation, we can easily figure out money won and money lost. If we call and win, we will win the small blind stack and also our $1 big blind. Once money has been put into the pot, even just a forced bet like the big blind, it no longer belongs to us. That means that money won in this spot is $1 plus $12 for $13 total. The money L is simply how much we would lose if we called this spot and lost the pot. Well, since the $1 big blind doesn't belong to us, we can only lose $11 by calling this, so money lost equals 11. The last thing we need is the percentage W and the percentage L. In the coin flip example, we knew that a coin had a 50-50 chance of coming up heads or tails, but what about in a poker hand? To figure out our percentage W and percentage L, we can use an equity calculator to figure out our equity, or estimated chance of winning, against our opponent's range of hands. For simplicity's sake, let's just assume the small blind would shove sevens plus, ace jack plus, and king queen here. I would normally assign a much wider range, but to make life simpler, let's just use that range for the time being. We can plug that into any equity calculator, like Equilab, and we see that our ace queen has 47% equity. So in this hand, we expect when we call, ace-queen will win 47% of the time, and of course we would lose the other 53% of the time. Now we just plug everything in, solve it, and ensure that a call is plus EV here. If we simplify it, we see 611 minus 583 gives us a plus 28 cents expected value. 
If we look at our two options here, between calling and folding, a fold would be 0 EV because we don't make or lose anything, and a call would be plus EV to the tune of 28 cents. This means that a call is not only plus EV, it is also optimal here. An optimal play in poker is when it is the absolute most profitable play you can make, and calling here is optimal against the range we assigned. While 28 cents may not seem like a lot of money, if we consistently call here we will net a significant amount of profit in the long run. It should also go without saying that if the small blind did shove a wider range, that our equity would actually go up, which means our percentage win goes up, our percentage loss goes down, and in the long run we're actually going to make more EV in this situation the wider and wider that the small blind shoves. The more you practice and calculate the EV in both common and tricky spots, the easier this becomes. Understanding if a spot looks plus EV or negative EV will become second nature and allow you to quickly find great spots and get away from bad ones. However, it is so important that you fully understand that EV is long term focused. The truth is that if you make three plus EV decisions in a row, you may lose all three of those hands. But in the long run, over millions of hands and samples, the results converge back to EV. And this is how we make money in poker, by consistently making plus EV plays that we know are profitable, and in the long run being rewarded with the money that we deserve. In the short run, you will experience random fluctuations from EV known as variance, but with good bankroll management you can ride it out, but we'll talk more about bankroll management in a different video. In real time, you won't be able to pull out an equity calculator, plug everything into an EV formula, and then solve. But constant practice with solving EV, estimating your equities against various ranges, and simple shortcuts will help you closely eyeball the EV of a play in real time. And when you have lots of available time when studying, calculate the EV of your plays so that it becomes second nature. Just remember, easy decisions in poker are blatantly plus EV or negative EV but difficult spots in poker are tricky because they're closer to zero EV. In those tricky spots, just a small change in our opponent's range can shift our play from being negative EV to plus EV, making them much more difficult to tell. With practice, you will be able to quickly find easy spots versus difficult spots and be able to choose the correct lines. Same as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Otherwise, good luck and happy grinding.